ಸಹನಾವಿಂಕ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಸ್ವಯಂ ವ್ಯಾಸೇನ ಕೃತಿ ಪುರಾಣ ಮುನಿ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಮೃದವರ್ಷಿ ಭಗವತಿ ಅಷ್ಟಾಧ್ಯಾಯಿ ಅಂಬತ್ವಾಮನುಸಂದಿ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತೆ ಭವತ್ವೇಷಿ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ವ್ಯಾಸ ವಿಶಾಲ ಬುದ್ಧೆ ಹುಲ್ಲಾರವಿಂದಾಯತ ಪತ್ರ ನೇತ್ರ ಯೇನ ತ್ವಯ ಭಾರತ ತೈಲ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಪ್ರಜ್ವಾಲಿತೋ ಜ್ಞಾನಮಯ ಪ್ರದೀಪ ಪ್ರಪನ್ನ ಪಾರಿಜಾತಾಯ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ವೇತ್ರೈಕ ಪಾಣೇ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಮುದ್ರಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಗೀತಾಮೃತು ಹೇ ನಮಃ ಯಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮವರುಣೇಂದ್ರ ರುದ್ರ ಮರುತ ಸ್ತುನ್ವಂತಿ ದಿವ್ಯೈಸ್ತವೈ ವೇದೈ ಸಾಂಗಪದ ಕ್ರಮೋಪನಿಷದೈ ಗಾಯಂತಿ ಯಂ ಸಾಮ ಗಾಹಿ ತಟ್ಕಟೇನ ಮನಸ ಪಶ್ಯಂತಿ ಯಂ ಯೋಗಿನ ಸರ್ವರ್ಮನ್ ಪರಿತ್ಯಜ್ಯ ಮಾಮೇಕ ಶರಣ ವ್ರಜ ಅಹಂ ತ್ವಾಪೇಭ್ಯ ಮೋಕ್ಷಯಿಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ಮಾಶು ಚಿವನ್ to this next uh, session on the 7th chapter of bhagavad gita which is titled the yoga of knowledge and wisdom so by the time we come to this 7th chapter we are actually touching upon a new chapter it is actually a whole new realm which we are looking at it and this is kind of based upon the fact that now we need to have a completely new perspective of what was presented before us so you know it's imagine like you know you're sitting in this uh in on top of a mountain and on top of this mountain there is this hut and you've been sitting and uh, meditating in this hut for a very long period of time now you have understood completely that you know you're beyond this body mind intellect because only you know when you go again not that only but when you're now sitting on top of this mountain and you're really not interacting with anybody at all and all these interactions typically are mainly because of the fact that i have thought of myself as this body mind intellect and the relations and everything is connected to that but now you're sitting on top of this mountain in a hut and there there are no people around nothing you're just meditating you've now kind of understood that you're not this body mind intellect and you are something beyond that and after doing this you just open the door of the hut and you just look outside so when you look outside what do you see you see this beautiful vista in front of you you know you see the mountains the valleys the greenery and the beautiful you know um, the clouds the uh, the sunshine everything you know you see this all this 
just comes in front of you. Now, you're very eager to know what is really this whole uh, thing that you see in front of you. You see this beautiful creation and your heart just, you know, wants to uh, connect with that whole creation now. No more it's just people and everything, but it's just this beautiful creation in front of you. And even as you get immersed in this creation, you are now looking to understand who really created this beautiful world, this beautiful universe, which is, you know, lying in front of you. There must be somebody, there must be something, there must be, you know, there's something beyond this. How can just all this happen just like that, right? So that's what you see the seventh chapter introducing us to. The seventh chapter really goes into understanding who is that creator, that creator who is Ishwara. And in order to understand that Ishwara, now you see that Lord Krishna prepares that student, prepares the student to understand and to take him to a next level of relationship of their own relationship. You know, Arjuna is a student and all along he's been looking at Krishna as a teacher. But now Krishna is taking him to the next level where he's saying, you know, Arjuna, listen, now I'm going to tell you that this beautiful creation, everything you see is actually nothing but me. So that's, that's the grandeur of that vision where, you know, you see Arjuna being set suddenly into tune with something which is beyond himself and which is beyond uh, where he sees what Krishna is all about. He's actually preparing him to understand that universal level. So he starts with that and he gives him that beautiful knowledge. Uh, you know, he gives that uh, glimpse of himself. And he starts to say that even as I'm telling you about myself, you know, I want you to now feel that whole thing and make that knowledge as yourself. And then he also tells him that, why is it that everybody doesn't feel that way? And he explains about, you know, that knowledge itself is so rare, it can only hit somebody who is ready for it. So he gives all this in the first three shlokas. So we will chant the three shlokas. Om Shri Paramatmane Namaha Atha Saptamo Dhyayaha Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Maya Saptamana Partha Yogam Yunjan Madashrayaha Asam Shayam Samagram Mam Yathagnyasya Sitachrunu Jnanam teham sabijnanam idam vakshyam yasheshataha yajnyatvane habhu yonyat jnatavyam avashishyate manushyanam sahasreshu kaschit yatati siddhaye yatatam api siddhanam kaschin maam veti tadvataha so Krishna tells that among all human beings, Bahunam Janmanam Ante, Jnanavan Maam Prapadhyate, which will be coming up, of course, later. But he says about how that it takes many, many lives and it takes a lot of time. And as much as, you know, we are doing all the sadhanas of going to the temple, observing our fast, even doing a lot of charity, all this Finally, what is it that's going to tip, you know, the really, um, like Malcolm Gladwell would say, what is the tipping point? Ultimately, it is this knowledge, this understanding of this knowledge of where I start to give up all my lower things to which I'm attached to, where I start to think about something higher. And that is why that example of the hut that I gave you, where as long as I'm sitting in this hut, I am thinking about just the fact that I 
this is me, I'm there, I'm meditating or anything. But when I'm exposed to that beautiful vista in front of me, I start to think about higher things. So this is why uh, in this chapter, you see it's telling us about how that I need to start thinking about this rarity of the human birth, about how, uh, what is the fact that I've always looked upon as a lower self? What is it about the higher self? How can I start to look at myself, introspect? How can I really look at the whole evolution itself and see how I can uh, move beyond that? And how can I attain all these worldly objectives or spiritual goals? So any questions so far in what this transition means to all of us? Why is it necessary for us to think about the higher? Do we even think about the higher? We, you know, when we go to the temple, we see through the idol which is in front of us, we can actually understand that there is some power beyond us. But how much do we see that power? How can we see the power? So that is again something that in the seventh chapter, you will see about how Lord Krishna presents so many different techniques, so many different ways in which I can start to feel that this is not just me alone, but there is something even beyond me. So that's what we will start. We started looking at it already with the lower and the higher prakritis. So we see how Lord Krishna, again, being that superb teacher that he is, he starts to first start making that connection. You know, when I said this person, you know, when you're looking outside of the hut and you're looking at this beautiful um, scenery in front of us, in front of you, what is that scenery really made of? So last time I started to present about how, you know, when we look at the scenery outside, we see first, you know, our eyes get accustomed to seeing only maybe the buildings, the people and everything. But if I start to break down each and everything, I see that the earth, not just earth, nature, is actually made of this five elements, starting from space. And from space has come this air. And from this air, you see water, uh, I'm sorry, fire. And then from the fire, water has come. And from the water, finally, the earth. We see mostly the earth in front of us. But if I see beyond that earth, you see all these elements. And that is if there is a way that even if I can look at the whole scenery in front of me, I'm seeing, I'm actually hearing the train. And because I'm staying close to a train station, I can see the train. It's so amazing. Immediately, my mind would go and see that that is only a train. But even looking at the train, I can see everything which is out there. You know, there is that earth nature in the train. There is a fire because of the, um, you know, the heat which is generated in the train itself. And then you see this aspect of uh, water. You see this uh, space has to be everywhere. Air is everywhere. So it's this idea. It, this is almost like a meditation tool. Where anything and everything I see, can I now break it down into these components of the five elements? So that is the uh, aspect that Krishna starts to first, allow, uh, you know, first starts to teach Arjuna to focus that aspect in him. So this whole entire universe, now taking it beyond one object and taking it from that object to now everything that I see, not just a train, but I'm seeing the human beings, I'm seeing the platform, you know, I'm just using the example again as a train station, but you can see from wherever you are, wherever in the room that you're sitting, you know, uh, the sofa, the people, everything, break them down into those five elements. So that's the, uh, that's, that is that power of that meditation of even on the Samashti. And we have talked about this in uh, Dhritta Shivavik, one of the last shlokas, where there are many kinds of meditation mentioned. 
One of them is about this um, Bahia, um, uh, what is that called? Uh, it's a meditation on the external self. So just to give that idea of how this entire world is nothing but this whole thing. So uh, you will see in the next three shlokas where Lord Krishna breaks up this entire world not just into those gross elements, which is what is seen by our eyes, but also much more beyond that. What is it that makes all those uh, elements which is out there, what is it that makes that train move? What is it that is making the bird? Uh, I'm hearing the birds here because it's early morning. So uh, what is it that's making the uh, birds chirp? What is it that is making somebody speak? So, in a sense, this entire universe is nothing but that Ishvara. And that Ishvara is made of, basically, is a mixture of two, uh, that the nature of Ishvara, the nature is, uh, is the word that is used here, which is Prakriti. And that nature Prakriti is of two kinds. One is the lower and the other one is the higher. So lower is this all inert and insentient material that I'm seeing. And the higher Prakriti is, or we call this Purusha, higher Prakriti or Purusha, as you might call, is the one that is making all these inert elements come to life, come to something where I can absorb it. So that's that whole aspect which is discussed again. And uh, in here, we also discussed briefly last time, and I'll bring that example again of the spider and the web, how this entire world, this entire jagat, can again be defined in, uh, or uh, the creator of the jagat, you can think about, is of, is uh, the nature is two. One is the jagat karanam, or the cause of this whole a uh, thing that you see in front of us, the gross part of it. And the other thing is the nimitta karam, the intelligent cause. What is it that made this whole thing come about? So the, this actually, uh, the shokas which are there in the section is actually very deep. You can also look at this whole jagat karanam as the maya part of it. And the nimitta karanam is that consciousness which is giving uh, life to that maya, if you will. So you can also look at it like that, Jagat Karnam and Limit Karnam that way. And this is where last time we discussed also about this beautiful uh, Mundaka Upanishad Shloka, where uh, uh, this example that I uh, presented last time, and I'll uh, sh uh, show this again, which is Spider and Web. Yathorna Nabhi Srijate Grinnate Cha Yatha Pratibhyam Oshadaya Sambhavanti so that Vishwam is like three examples, actually, he gives them here. But we will pick only the uh, spider and the web example here. So just like, you know, this uh, spider, how does it really create this whole web? It actually creates something from a secretion within itself. So the spider itself, through the secretion, creates this whole web, which is kind of like a nest, you know, in which it itself is residing, right? So the spider itself is the cause, Jagat Karanam, and uh, Jagat Karnam, in the sense, it is responsible for that inert material of this web. And it is also the Nimitta Karnam, Nimitta Karnam or the intelligent cause, right? So just like that, we this entire world also, what Lord Krishna is saying, you know, when Arjuna said, who is this really, this God principle, who is this creator? So Lord Krishna says, I'm going to tell you about myself. And he's telling about how he himself is that Ishvara, which is responsible for this whole world. And it is also, he himself is responsible for creation of this whole world. He is the 
nimitt karanam and he is a jag jagat karanam so the whole thing you can uh, the uh, or he is the abhinna nimitta upadana karanam he is the intelligent and the material cause for the whole universe now you would be asking then let's tell me more about let's break this down as to which is the lower self and which is the higher self and that is why you see in shloka number 4 which you also we have done it i'm just reviewing it again he says you know the lower self is basically all this earth the water the fire the wind and the space of five elements and along with that it is the ahankara ahankara the i factor the ego factor and also the uh, factor of the manaha the ahankara iti yamme bhinna prakriti ashrada kam manaha buddhi in the second line you see manaha and buddhi so this is the eight fold character here so again it's such an amazing this is you know a whole different way of really understanding this entire god principle you know and if we look at the god principle this way that it is this entire universe and what is this universe this universe is nothing but these eight elements then i have a greater appreciation now of really who that god is that god is in front of me the god is in everything you know it is that lower self which he's talking about here but it is also so as we said this is all the eight elements but actually one thing to keep in mind here when he says it's all these eight elements he's actually talking about these eight elements in its subtle form okay subtle form of this thing so in tattva bodh and atma bodh those uh, and viveka chudamani there's a lot of description about the uh, uh, the gross body and the gross body made of the five elements uh, and these five elements earth water fire air space it goes through the process of panchi karana which is a combination of all these elements in its subtle form in the tanmatras and it forms this gross right so here the reference is actually at the tanmatras the subtle level that he says is the lower nature so then what brings this inert material to uh, its functional capability so that is where he talks about then this idea of the higher nature the higher nature or the consciousness apare uh, apare apare yam itaha to anya so what i just described was my lower nature the gross part of it now i'm going to tell you the higher nature which is uh, vidhi but no understand from it now what is my higher nature it is that jeeva bhuta maha yayedam dharyate jagat the principle of life or the essence of what makes all those other elements what they are like for example we give many different examples i mean even now i gave this example of what makes the train move what makes the bird chirp what makes um, um the electric the bulb um, glow you know what makes uh, the fan move you know all these things are that essence part of it and that is the higher nature so he gives that example of the higher nature then in shloka number 5 he ties both of them and he says about how ultimately it's both of them together this lower nature and the higher nature both together is really the womb of this entire creations so this is again of course the shloka number 5 which we said let me I'll go to this uh, shloka number 6 so uh, you know just like how you see this building which is built out of you know lots of mortar and uh, uh, bricks basically um, the wood and everything now you see uh, he ties both of them together in saying in shloka number 6 how that entire uh, thing is kept together and what what is it that keeps together so this shloka number 6 is very uh, beautiful where he says etat yodini bhutani 
सर्वाणि सर्वाणीत्युपधारय अहम कृष्ण से जगत प्रभव प्रलयस्तथा सो इसे अल्टिमेटली आई एम द वन हु विथ दिस एस्पेक्ट ऑफ लोअर नेचर एंड द हायर नेचर is the womb of this entire creations so womb you can look at it as the creation so i am that creation of this whole universe but i'm also going to tell you i am the pralayaha pralayaha and the dissolution and also prabhavah i'm the source and the dissolution everything it is only me that is the idea he is trying to show so how do we really understand this aspect we can only the i've given a few examples before and i'm going to bring that one example again here which is this aspect of the carpet and the uh, clock we saw this uh, basically as an example of how you can see the whole universe as in a design of a carpet right so in this carpet as much as we see the whole creation of this designs but what where did the designs really come from the designs actually came from this basically the thread right so it is really the whole roll of thread which has been used by this weaver you know he puts this in this uh, weaving machine and he starts to move the um, uh, cloth the thread and as he moves the thread you know you see the cloth formation happens and ultimately finally you see this whole carpet sort of this example of what i said with the spider and the web right so uh, ultimately you see the thread itself is the cause and the thread itself is also the effect so the cause and the effect is there in the carpet itself so to for us if you look at the entire world uh, of everything which is in front of us the people the objects even at the mind level our ideas all that is nothing but the which are sometimes we call this as effects and unfortunately for us too you know we become so conditioned to focus on the effect that we don't see actually the cause but the cause is inbuilt you know the cause is really inbuilt in each and everything that we are seeing so that is what krishna is trying to say what you are seeing in this entire world arjuna is nothing but me alone i am there in everything whatever you see and but you are seeing only mostly my lower nature so but i want you to rise above the lower nature and actually focus more on what is making that lower nature work if you can so this is a second type of meditation that you can see where everything that i see i start to either use this thing of neti neti or i try to dissolve it in my own mind you know i dissolve all these colors like even with this carpet that i'm seeing i'm dissolving all the colors of the carpet i'm dissolving all the designs and i'm trying to see what is it that is holding all this and the what i'm what is holding all this is nothing but that same thread which is holding you know which is in between, is going there if i can even practice a meditation like this when i'm sitting down where i'm dissolving each one and get to really thinking that that thread which is there in front it would be amazing you know so that's what he's trying to say in the shloka etad yodini bhutani sarvani iti upadharaya aham krishnasya jagatah so that's why i'm saying i i am krishna see i am this entire universe and i am also the same the source and this so that's the ishwara that i am so according to this bhagavad gita now you see how you know um that creation 
is nothing but this product of union of this Purusha and Prakriti. And you see that the lower Prakriti keeps changing all the time. And that is why I have this example of this pot. You know, this pot is made of mud. But once my use of this pot is over, what do I do? I just break it. It goes back to mud. And then I use that same mud to make all these other objects here. Right? So creation then is nothing but this union of that mud, that mud and the forms, right? And now, if you think a bit, think about this a little more, this form is actually nothing but it exists only in my mind. You know, I am the one who has created the same form and I have established a utility for this form. And I'm dissolving the form again in my own mind. And that is ultimately, and then I convert it into something else. And then I go, uh, you know, continue to use this, right? So this is the beauty on how he's explained your creation. And therefore, ultimately, we say in uh, Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma, this is again a major Mahavakyam. All this ultimately is nothing but Brahman alone. If I can have this knowledge and I can meditate on this creation and see the entire world as that cloth that or uh, uh, the thread which is holding the cloth. So imagine again, you know what? Um, how how much I have transformed within myself to look at the universe as one. Any questions or any thoughts so far? Because now we are entering into another beautiful part of the uh, thing where he now explains about the lower form. What are the different lower forms and how are they held together? What is it that is holding it together? So ultimately, the whole thing that is holding together is the Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma. All this is nothing but Brahman alone. And that is the underlying reality of it. So you will see that in the next shloka, this beautiful, uh, there, is a, a, there is an example, a simile which is brought out, which brings that harmonious interrelationship of this lower and the higher, Purusha and Prakriti. And he gives this example of, and that's again, I talked about Maya and uh, what is holding the two mayas, you know? So let's chant this very beautiful shloka, which is very, very famous. So I know in every chapter, I say there are some uh, famous shlokas and I've been hinting on all of them. And even here, this uh, shloka number seven is very important. And of course, all these are uh, tending towards how we should be looking at the world, right? So let's chant this. Matta Parataram Nanyat Matta Parataram Nanyat Kinchidasti Dhananjaya Kinchidasti Dhananjaya Mai Sarvamidam Protam Mai Sarvamidam Protam Sutre Manigana Eva Sutre Mani Gana Eva. So, as much as Lord Krishna is really uh, telling us, see Ishwara ultimately as the ultimate cause of the universe, just like how the thread is the ultimate cause for the carpet. So, here he's illustrating that same thing very, very poetically by showing that we need to uh, look at the whole world. How do we do this? So, mattaf parataram nanyatu. So, he's assuring Krishna, I'm um, assuring Arjuna, saying that beyond that lower and the higher, there is nothing else. Matta parataram na anyat. There is absolutely nothing. Not even a little bit. There is nothing at all, oh, mighty arm one, you know, he's trying to tell Arjuna, he's um, praising him, Dhananjaya, and he's saying, don't even worry about it if you're looking for something else. 
The buck literally stops here. If you can focus on me as the cause of the whole jagat and focus on the cause, not on the effects. Today, we live in this world of effects, right? We interact with all these inert materials, which is of the lower nature of that Brahman, that ultimate Ishwara, uh, that Brahman in the Saguna form, which is Ishwara. So he says, Matha Parataram Na Anyata Kinchita Siddhananje Mai Sarvamidam Protam Sutre Mani Gana. So he's just giving him again Sutre Mani Gana Iba. So I'm giving this uh, example of this beautiful pearl necklace here. Of course, you can replace with many other examples. But just he's trying to show that here, you know, the word gem actually is, of course, referring to each and every uh, aspect in this world itself. And he says, you know, how um, just like how you have this thread, which is holding all these pearls together. That is how this entire world is actually nothing but held together by that principle of Ishwara. That is my higher self. That higher self is this sutra, uh, this particular uh, uh, particular thread. And that is holding each one of these objects of the world, which is my low prakriti, together. So you see both the lower nature and the higher nature. The lower nature is also nothing but just me alone. That is what Krishna is trying to say here. So the significance, if you look at this uh, thing, is each one of the beads are nothing but the lower nature. We unfortunately focus on that lower nature, right? We focus on the uh, pearls and we get enamored by it. So next time when we look at any necklace, and I know there are a couple of marriages coming up in uh, the in our own devotees uh, in uh, all your uh, families. So when you look at the necklace, look at it more as that aspect of Brahman, which is holding everything together. So Krishna is saying, you know, just like how the uh, thread is holding everything together. So too, I'm the one in the form of the higher cause holding each one of these lower natures together. If I can just develop this kind of a vision, and that's the significance of this necklace, is to develop that vision that ultimately everything is nothing but that Ishwara. And Ishwara is nothing but the Saguna form of Brahman. And that Ishwara is there in and through everything. There is absolutely, then you will see, there is no concept of even any kind of duality. When I say duality, the various dualities that we, ex we experience is this joy and sorrow, right? Sometimes I'm joyful, sometimes I'm down. And then uh, also heat and cold at the body level. And then uh, mana, apamana, you know, we say honor and dishonor at the intellectual levels. And uh, joints are, of course, at the mind level. Uh, at the body level, it's this heat and cold and other kind of uh, feelings, other kind of, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, other kind of uh, emotions, but uh, emotions at the mind level. And also the intellect, uh, at the intellect level, the thoughts of uh, honor, dishonor, we said. And at the body level is the uh, is the um, sensations. I was looking for the word sensations. So all this ultimately is uh, also Ishwara, but it is the lower aspect of it. I need to shift my personality, my focus to the aspect that is holding everything. So that is the shloka number seven. Now, having explained all this, Lord Krishna now goes into how, you know, the if you think about each one of these beads is nothing but the uh, gross manifestation of Ishvara. Now let us look at how each one of the beads, what are the different kinds in which that Ishvara is manifesting. So that is why in the next 
literally four shlokas, Lord Krishna goes step by step and he explains about 14 different examples. And in each of the examples, he then says, you know what? Me, I am present in each one of this creations. And you will see this 14 examples that he talks about. They're all from, you know, things that we go through every day. We see and ex uh, uh, experience that every day. And th this, uh, he says, in each and everything that you experience, it is my own subtle nature, which is out there. So he uh, he's literally, you know, I mean, it's like uh, when we, um, I remember when I was young, you know, in this Chanda Mama and all that, there will be uh, this example of spot the 10 mistakes in this picture, you know. So there will be somebody who is, you know, um, um, trying to hold this pencil in the hand, but then uh, the, um, uh, the um, uh, lead is missing or whatever, you know, that kind of thing. So then, you know, you look very intently to see what are all those things that, uh, which is flawed, right? But here, Krishna is saying, okay, why don't you look around and tell me what are all the fact, all the objects that you see where you can see me, you know? So that is how he's giving this next uh, four shlokas. So again, the idea is not really looking for those objects, but looking at the same object in a different manner. Now you're looking at the same object as Ishwara. So that is why he gives all these uh, 14 things as pointers to explain his glory, you know, his vibhutis. So that is the idea. So let's chant these, um, let's see how many of these four shlokas we can do. Raso hamapsu kaunteya Raso hamapsu kaunteya Prabhas mishashi surya yo ho Pranava sarva vedeshu Pranava sarva vedeshu Shabda ke paurusham drishu Shabda ke paurusham drishu So he's saying that when you look at water from now on, you know, when you're taking this cup of water to drink, now, don't look at that as just water which is quenching your thirst. Look at the essence of water. So here he's saying rasaha, the, the, uh, the taste. Rasaha, he says sapidity or uh, the taste. Of course, we may say what is really there in the taste of water, right? But you can see what is the essence of water. As a chemist, I may say it's nothing but H2O. But even beyond the H2O, what is it that helps me uh, quench my thirst. Think about it that way. So that is, that is me. That essence of water is in me. So you see how, you know, slowly you start to develop a sort of one um, uh, bhakti in its true essence, you know. So these shlokas really give you that aspect to channel our thoughts in such a way that now I'm looking at that same objects with a great amount of um, gratitude, with a great amount of an awe factor, you know? So, which is why he starts with big examples, you know, not just today, if I have to use an example, I may use my cell phone here, my mouse here, you know, all these are the ones which is close to me, right? But he's really forcing us to look at the nature and he says, think about water. And that is, that is what I am. Then I'm also the light in the moon and the sun. Prabhavaha asmi in Shashi, the, uh, uh, the moon and sun in the Surya. So all this is also nothing but me. And then Pranavaha Sarva Vedeshu, the Vedas, in all these Vedas, what is the ultimate in the Vedas? 
It is nothing but knowledge, right? So what is that knowledge? Where has it emerged? Where has it come from? It is finally from this syllable, which is called as Om. So Pranavaha, which is Om, in Sarva, all of them, all the Vedas, I am that Om. And then Shabdaha Ke Paurusham Drishu, in, in uh, Shabdaha. Shabdaha, in all those words, uh, I am that, the, I am the sound, I am the sound uh, in, the, um, in the ether here, as he says. And in space, I am that, uh, and uh, K, which is space, um, I am that sound, sound which is, if you look at um, later, maybe I won't dilute the uh, thing here today. Later, we would see how, uh, how all the sense organs, the five sense organs, their devatas are all these uh, space and all uh, the five elements. They're connected to the sound, the, the what we see and etc. But here, he's just giving one example, which is, uh, I am the sound in the space and I am the virility in men. Now, of course, what he's trying to show is not just men, but all beings. What is it that gives that, um, uh, what is the nature of a human being? What is it that is giving the dynamism in a human being? So all that is, so he takes big examples just to push the envelope in our own thinking. And he's trying to show that ultimately focus on the essence of what they are. Then he goes to number nine, where he continues to elaborate on some more of his vibhutis. Punyo gandhav pratibhyamcha. Punyo gandhav pratibhyamcha. Tejashchasmi vibhavasau. Tejashchasmi vibhavasau. Jeevanam sarva bhuteshu. Jeevanam sarva bhuteshu. Tapaschasmi tapas vishu. Tapaschasmi tapas vishu. So he now goes to describing some other things that we as human beings sometimes get attracted to. So one of them is perfumes, you know. So he's saying, what better perfume can there be than the the uh, the fragrance that comes from earth. So I'm just reminded again of Kerala. In Kerala, pretty soon, the uh, rainy season is going to start. It will start by the 4th of June or something. And after that, for three, four months, it will be raining continuously. But then the beauty of that rain is that, you know, it just brings that fragrance of uh, the earth, you know, and I'm sure many of us have smelt also, you know, how the mud, when it gets that first rain in there, you know, it's so, um, I mean, it's amazing when you smell that smell there, right? So, punyaha gandaha pritivyam. So, the sweet, I'm the sweet fragrance in earth. So, you can see now again, we talked about the sound associated with space. Now we have the smell associated with earth so too so you see the ears as a as a sense organ which hears the sound is connected to space now we have the sweet fragrance and then later you will see how the fire is connected to the forms the eyes you know so all this will come but here again it's the sweet fragrance of the earth so this in so in shakracharya and his bhasha actually says about how any fragrance that you smell ultimately is nothing but a product of our own prakriti or nature. And any uh, odor is a product of ignorance or avidya. So he says that. So next thing he says, tejaha, tejaha, the brilliance. Cha asmi vibhavasau. I am the brilliance, brilliance in that fire. Okay. And I am the jivanam. I am the thing that gives that aspect of life in all beings. Now, many times the question then will come, you know, okay, now I see. So that is why uh, uh, life is Ishvara, you know. 
No, life is not Ishwara. Life is the set of processes, you know, the prana, apana, vyana, udana, samana, all these processes is what constitutes life. And that uh, aspect which gives that all the five elements in jivas, that is also nothing but me. You know, that's what Krishna is saying. And then tapaha cha asmi tapa, tapa vishu, tapas vishu. So in the tapas vishu, that is the person who observes extreme tapas, even for such a person, I am the one which is, uh, I'm the one, uh, I'm the uh, uh, aspect of austerity in that tapas. So I'm the one, so I'm the one which gives the energy, which builds in my body to give that person to hold that body together, even when somebody is undergoing that tapas. So um, all this is nothing but just me alone. Then in shloka number 12, in shloka number 10, as much as we have seen so far, where he talks about, uh, you know, the fragrance, the brilliance, and the austerity and everything. Now he talks about uh, the, uh, the seed, basically about how did this entire thing come about? It came from the uh, a seed, you know. So he says about how Pijam Mam Sarva Putanam. Pijam Mam Sarva Putanam. Vidhi Partha Sanatanam. Vidhi Partha Sanatanam. Buddhi Buddhi Matam Asmi. Buddhi Buddhi Matam Asmi. Tejas Tejas Vinamaham. Tejas, tejas, so he says, now think of me, O Lord Krishna, as the seed of all beings. So when I look at everything in this world, they have to come from somewhere, right? I look at the nature, the nature, all the plants, the trees, they have come from a seed. And now, of course, uh, the mango season in its, I think, uh, 2023 mango season is probably the best season so far I've ever seen. Everywhere you go, see, whether it's in Kerala or whether now I'm in Chennai today, I'm in Chennai, and you see nothing but mangoes everywhere. And they all have come from somebody who planted a seed in the ground, right? So, Bijam Mam Sarva Bhutanam. I am that seed in all beings. So too with all the buildings. If you see it, they have come from a certain design, a blueprint which was there. And that blueprint translates itself into this building, right? So with the with Bija Mam Sarva Bhutanam, I am that seed in all beings. So know me as Vidhi, know me, Vidhi Partha Sanatanam. I am know me as eternal. I am the seed in every possible thing. Okay. So the last two shokas talk more about the gross aspects. Now you see he's talking a little more on the subtle aspects here. And then he says, Buddhir Buddhi Matam Asmi. Anyone, wherever anyone says, you know, oh, look at that smart kid or look at that smart phone. So I am that smartness in that phone. I am that smartness in that kid. Okay. Tejas, Tejas Vinamaham. Anywhere, wherever you see just beautiful splendor, you know, when you see all these huge, the weddings, when you see everything is so beautiful, everything is so splendorous. What is it? All that also, Krishna is saying, finally, Arjuna, that is who I am. So, we have seen now some of the manifestations of Ishwara. So, uh, Krishna is telling Arjuna about, as you look at everything, look at how the vibhutis, all my glory, you know. I remember Swami Tejo Mananda would say about the vibhutis of Swami Chinmananda, you know. Wherever Swami Chinmananda went, in each and every place, you know, where he has started either a center or a school or a college. And now that I'm part of this university, where this university is located in this beautiful mountain. And uh, everything was the vibhutis, you know. 
And so to hear you, what you've seen so far is the Vibhutis. We will continue with the rest of the two uh, uh, in about two weeks. Okay, so I'll explain why two weeks very soon, but I'll stop the recording also. Sarve bhavantu sukhinaha, sarve santu niramayaha, sarve bhatrani pashyantu, ma kashyat dukha bhagpavet, om shanti shanti shanti, om purna madav purna midam purna at purna mudachyate, purna sya purna madaya purna meva vashishyate, Om Shanti 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 Hari Hi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Hi Om Let me stop sharing and then stop.